British Association of Dermatologists Guidelines for the Management of Hydrocolitis Suppletiva for 2018. I'd like to introduce Dr John Ingram. Thank you. Thanks, Emma. So um, it's great to have a chance to talk about our HS guidelines. Um, they're intended for uh, primary and secondary care. Um, they're going to they cover self-management, uh, medical and surgical interventions. And uh, uh, we're really conscious that, um, that they're directed both at primary and secondary care because most HS management occurs in primary care. Uh, what makes the BAD guidelines different to others? So it's uh, having wide stakeholder input from um, primary care colleagues, from dermatology nurses, plastic surgeons, and crucially, um, we have a patient and a, a carer on the guideline development team. And we've used great methodology to uh, structure the guidelines based on uh, the most important HS outcomes. And that ensures that the guidelines are accredited by, by NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. How are the guidelines constructed? So it's a, a big systematic review, uh, which looked at 3,000 uh, uh, trial records. We read 520 full texts from those and included 16 of the records in our quantitative review. The meta-analysis is just limited to adalimumab because um, that's the only intervention for which there are comparable trials. So what's in your main flowchart of patient management? So uh, in primary uh, or secondary care, um, important that patients are given information, um, that their baseline disease severity is measured, uh, that their, any pain is measured and, and treated appropriately, uh, and also that um, disease severity is recorded with quality of life and a, and a lesion count, and that dressings are provided if, if required. Patients should have screening, uh, management of any cardiovascular risk factors, um, uh, mental health issues such as depression, uh, and then support for smoking cessation and weight loss. And then in terms of initial interventions, um, topical clindamycin, the oral tetracycline class once or twice daily, um, and moving on to the combination of clindamycin and rifampicin, some of the other oral disease modifiers, uh, and then for those with, with multiple regions affected, uh, ad libumab 40 milligrams weekly. For those with just a, uh, a single region affected, um, to consider uh, a wide excisional surgery, uh, having had review in a HS multidisciplinary team as, uh, setting, ideally, uh, and uh, importantly, having been given advice about uh, the uh, downtime following surgery and wound care after surgery. Um, and then uh, in those who've been offered uh, and receiving ad libumab to um, uh, adhere to, in the UK, the uh, nice criteria for um, adalimumab continuation, which is at least a 25% reduction in inflammatory lesions or with no increase in abscesses or draining sinuses. And uh, then self management is important to, uh, as well. And so, thinking about patients being proactive in receiving support from their GPs for pain relief, wound dressings, uh, for uh, mental health support, uh, and weight uh, and uh, management and, and smoking cessation. So uh, yeah, we, there's no evidence we found for particular special diets. So we would suggest a healthy, balanced diet. What about audit criteria? So um, really, that's looking at whether patients have received uh, patient information leaflets. They've had support for smoking cessation and weight loss. Uh, they've had their uh, other risk factors screened, uh, and there's been um, good documentation of baseline disease severity. Um, discussions about. Uh, uh, and downtime uh, and wound care after surgery and adherence to NICE uh, or uh, criteria for adalimumab. Thank you very much. Thank you.